correction of the hand volume loss with calcium hydroxyapatite offers instant gratification of a more useful appearance, both to myself and to my patients. Needle and blunt cannula techniques will be demonstrated today. The area is generously prepped with chlorhexidine. The patient previously washed hands thoroughly and removed old jewelry. In this patient, volume loss and thinning of the cutis led to formation of hollows, visible tendons at rest and with flexion, and prominent veins. There are many transverse wrinkles. First demonstration will utilize 27 gauge included with the product. Initially, I will inject first, second, and third intermetacarpal spaces. To avoid injection into vessels and tendons, I will deliver small boluses of 0.2 to 0.5 cc's between superficial fascia and dermis. So I tend the skin to make sure that I deliver the product superficially enough to avoid puncturing a tendon or embolizing a vessel. It is important to undercorrect as down the road the product will result in additional collagen formation and you really don't want to have puffy hands. So the calcium hydroxyapatite injectable is an opaque, highly viscous gel. Its primary component is synthetic calcium hydroxyapatite. The gel is relatively difficult to extrude. You can see that they require some force to get it into small boluses when I'm using the needle. Off-label mixing of the gel will decrease the viscosity and decrease the amount of force required for the injection and also ease product distribution under the skin. However, even without lidocaine, injections cause little discomfort. To find my next point of entry, I ask the patient to make a fist, locate the point, tend the skin, and inject slowly. I use my fingers to feel what, you know, what volume was injected as I also watch my syringe. I uh, use additional points of entry and injection as necessary. Here I'm using more distal location to correct very prominent MCP joints and get a little bit of a filler in between. Injecting closer to the wrist will eliminate the transverse wrinkles that really give away the age. As with any filler injection, um, I uh, pull on the plunger slightly first and make sure I don't have anything in my bevel. Correction of the anatomical snuff box that I just did um, will really fill up the hand and, again, make it much more useful. I used the entire one and a half syringe because of how much atrophy there was. And the last step is thorough massaging of the boluses to create smooth appearance. To facilitate massage, I used a few drops of chlorhexidine. Uh, you can use sterile lubricating gel instead. Once completed, a sterile gauze will be placed over the hand, and the patient will then sit on the hand to help smooth the material. Meanwhile, I will be injecting her second hand. The second hand is prepped with chlorhexidine again, and this time I will use the blunt tip cannula technique. The blunt tip cannula comes as a set with a 25-gauge needle to create a port for 27-gauge cannula injection. Cannula has a marker to show location of the bevel. The tip is blunt and extrusion of material occurs from an opening on the lateral side of the cannula. The advantage of the blunt cannula is decrease in soft tissue trauma and virtual elimination of damage to blood vessels and tendons. Delivery of the product is similar to the needle technique. However, the cannula allows me to deliver boluses at various distances from the entry point. I'm first correcting the fourth interdigital web space, and I can feel the product going in, and then actually delivery of the product is much easier through the cannula than it was through the needle. There is much less resistance.
I use my finger to feel how much of the product was delivered and whether it is sufficient for this particular area. Then the next portal entry is created with 25 gauge needle. I usually prefer the patient to ball their hand into the fist to see exactly where I need to be. After the quick prick with the needle, I insert the cannula and this part is already painless. And here comes the initial bolus. It goes in smoothly. And I'll advance the cannula to go a little further towards the wrist and deliver the rest of the bolus. No blood. So once the cannula is withdrawn, the entry point is no longer visible, and once again, there is no bleeding. Going to correct the anatomical snuff box and the mid hand. Again, threading the catheter right under the skin. Very superficial. You can see that bolus rising. Advance further. Correct closer to the wrist. Very few injection points. Going to place a larger bolus here because there's a larger area to correct. Fan it a little bit. Hardly anything in terms of bleeding, no bruising whatsoever. Gel moves quickly. There is usually some degree of asymmetry between the hands. I will use what's left of my radius on the left hand to correct a few minor areas on the right hand. And you can see again in terms of bleeding the difference is striking. Repeated massage of the hands will then um, ensure even distribution and decrease risk of nodule formation down the road. She will ice injection sites for a few minutes after we're done and then we'll be ready to hit the road.